I received my first Superba, an S48, about three years ago and have recently found this 1602, at least so I believe, by comparison with friends' machines, that I bought as a parts machine. But we decided to attempt a fuller restoration, and that's where we are right now, putting the best of both machines together. Unfortunately, neither machine arrived with any clamps whatsoever, so Jack is going to show you how he created some. These are the clamps he made, and in this picture, there's a shadow making it almost appear that they have extra pieces on them. That's not true. They're C-shaped clamps. All right, this is called a frame washer, and the reason it's called that is because it's a great big washer with a little teeny hole. So if you had to put a fender up against the side of your car, that's also called a fender washer, you see your bolt would be there, but your pressure would be a large area, and the size of it is the hole in the middle and the circumference of it. Now, I'm thinking the wider the circumference, the better it is for your table bottom, because a lot of them are uneven. Up to a point, because right. it has to fit. Now, all clamps are not made the same, just like all everythings are not made the same. So, since this Superba has quite a distance from the edge of the table to the base of the clamp. The, clamps, the clamp base is about that wide, so you can see you need some distance. So a little short clamp that was, say, only that long is not going to do the job. Mm -mm. So what we did was we measured where about the center of the clamp would be, and this is just quarter-inch stock, flat stock steel. We heated it. You can see the discoloration right there. We bent it. We made measurements, so we marked our piece. We knew this is about how far we wanted to be away from the table edge to get to the center area of the clamp space for the machine. We drilled a hole. We tapped it for a 3 8 threaded rod. And of course, you can see we heated the threaded rod and bent it. Now, here's what we did. If you'll notice, right, let me get my indicator. I'll use my solder. Right here, you can see hammer marks. It's called swedging. And you can see how we've spread this area out. While it was hot, I laid it on the anvil and hit it with my big shop hammer. What that does is keep these bends that we made by heating it up from unbending because we've already put stress on the metal by heating it and bending it. So in order for these clamps, you can see right there, I hit it a good one. But in order to make these clamps where they'll hold up to the pressure, trying to spread them out when they're holding the machine, that's what we do. We swedge these corners. And again, you can see how much it's rounded out. And that just thickens it right there while it's hot and it makes it stiff. Now, <clears throat> what we had was I made this cute little brass end to go on it, and we lost it. Okay, so I've just made this one. Frame washer, 3 8 nut. And you'll notice it'll screw right down on the rod like so. What you do is just barely start it. So here we go. We're going to clamp to the table. And you notice this spins very, very freely. So you know without looking when you get to the depth of the table. That's another thing. All tables are not created the same. So what we did was make a wide depth, and we can shorten it all we want to. But here we go. We're going to clamp the table, and I'm going to use my hand for the table right now. And what's going to happen? Ouch, ouch. No, no, no. I'm not going to tighten it that much. But what's going to happen is you're going to feel a pressure difference and you'll notice this is going to start trying to turn up into the nut. Well, that's fine, because that way you know you got a good tight fit, and I'm not tightening it any more than that. All right, now we've got our frame washer, we've got our nut, we've got our safety pan underneath it, and you can see that, gee, it spills sometimes. We don't want to hurt the table. Here is our jeweler's stand, a uh, set of hemostats, and a clamp on a wood block works real awesome. well. 
but life being what it is, I want this to be almost flat. And I can tilt my hemostats, but what I had to do was tilt the block against the curve of the table. This table has been used a lot. Mm -hmm. so that this stays pretty flat. And you're going to see why in a minute. Now, this is hot work. So you'll notice I'm getting away from it with the fingers. We can't, you could, we couldn't see you. Okay. He's holding his, is that called solder? Yes. At a distance. This is 50-50 solder. Uh, and it's fluxed solder. And you can see it came from a defunct, defunct place that used to be Hadio Shack, rhymes with. <laughs> Uh, but it's called 60-40 solder. That means it's 60% tin and 40% lead, and it does have clear flux inside of it. But yeah, I'm going to hold this way over here. All right, this is called a hobby torch, and you fill it up with uh, butane. butane through there, and it clicks. got a piezoelectric start. Come on now. There, there you go. Goes. And then it's got a safety that lets it go. Now, what we want to do is you can see what happens when we put the heat to this washer. So we want to concentrate on the center. See it changing colors as the heat dissipates the moisture and gets it prone. Can you rotate your hand a little because people couldn't really see the colors? Well, do you want to cool it off and start No, it? no. It's okay. Okay. But that's what you're watching for as the solderer is to see the coloration change and look up oh, we're hot enough it's melting the solder right now notice it made just a little blob it's not doing anything shuck and gee willikers it's going to follow the heat let me see if i can get it to behave and what it should do is instead of being just a ball when we get to the right temperature it's going to make a puddle I see it widening out. Yes, yes it is. So you don't have to exactly measure temperature because it's happening automatically. Right. Now you see it's flattened out. And it's now not a ball but a puddle. Oh, look. We're going to make more puddle. Right now it's making ball. That's the flux. So don't be afraid when it sparks a little. That's the flux. But Those you of see, us who are standing over it filming are a little nervous. I'm sorry. I'll quit making it do that. Please. Uh-oh, that one got away. Uh -huh. See, that's why we have our drip pan. Uh-huh. Yeah, there you go. Now it's starting to behave itself. But what we have to do is get good adhesion. Excuse me while I get more length of solder. We have to have good adhesion to the washer. Now it's at just the right temperature. Uh -huh. The flux is making it clear up. And look at there. Now we set the torch aside. So we have our glue, basically. Right. Now we move our little... Woo, that's hot. We move our little guy into shape. Now watch. We want to do the same thing. We want to heat the nut until the solder isn't just beaded up around it, but flows. And it's already pretty warm, I promise. From my vantage point, I can see that some of the sides oh, there, that's the are more one. flowed around than others. Right, right. And we're going to work on that. See, what we may have to do is touch a little flux to the nut, too. It will get back in your spot. There you go. But be careful, because you see what happens. We moved. While we are working and watching this, I want to say that various people have told me they were pretty sure clamps from this, that, or the other machine would work. They didn't work for me. That's all I can say. The setup of the Superba has a good bit of machine, although it is aluminum and therefore lighter than some, hanging over the edge of the table. And whereas a Brother River, for example has braces on the river clamps. The Superba isn't set up like that. So That's right. We have found that a more substantial clamp was necessary. Well, and let me say something about clamps while we're, I'm trying to position this. There it is right there. 
And I know that in electronics, they tell you never blow on the solder, but this is not an electronic circuit. So, oh, he's blowing on the solder. Oh my God, don't tell Radio Shack. I don't and you think can see, anybody can tell Radio Shack. You see how hot this still is. Yep. Because you definitely do not want your fingers in that. No, you don't. And you do want something under this. Mm -hmm to catch that solder. It cools pretty quick. See, I can touch, you can touch it now, the splash. And right here is pretty warm on the hemostats. But it, it's not endangering the wood block at this right, point. Right, and you'll notice there's little rubber feet on the clamp, but I took the rubber feet off. Just in case of overheating but, the plastic? Yeah, but let's talk about clamps. Width of the clamp, thickness of the clamp, depth of the clamp, depth between the back of the clamp and the actual rod, all of these were different, just like Japanese metric is not the same as German metric. All right, now, in the past, I have taken many, many clamps and laid one on top of the other, laid one right next to the other. If you put them, like, back to back, like this, and you can see, look, Oh my goodness, mine are not exactly the same as far as the height of the actual clamp. That's why I have long threaded rods. But all clamps are not made the same. Now sometimes if this width is the same for two different machines, well then yeah, and this thickness is the same for two different machines, then it'll go in the clamp holder. Wow, okay, that'll work great. But as Catherine was saying, is the weight distribution from the center of the clamp area the same? And as I remember, you first made some out of a slightly lighter piece of, is this iron? Steel. Steel. And you thought it was adequate, but it just felt shaky. And who wants the machine they just restored falling on their toe? That's right. I made them originally out of... Eighth inch mild steel, this is quarter inch mild steel, and the eighth inch is usually what your clamps are when you get them, but that's hardened steel. And I know how to harden steel, but that's a lot of work. It takes a lot of acetylene anyway, to heat them up. Anyway, these have actually been used now for two or three years since I've yeah. had the Superba, and he's reworking them now because the originals of these... I wore out. Plus, I think you refined the design a little for this yeah, one. Yeah, I did. Um, the first one, let me just say, I love the smell of hot brass. <laughs> I used brass as the joining material, and that works really great. The problem is I realized I want something that will break loose from the washer before it damages the clamp configuration. And the brass is hard enough that it would stick to the nut and to the washer so that if you tightened it up too much, it's going to distort the clamp. This will break. The nut will come loose and you'll say, so hey, you, wait. You've not created a first choice failure position to avoid other damage. Is right. that right? Yeah, it's my fusible link in this particular circuit. 